someone else that didn't that came out fairly pissed off. Okay. Why well, hello there everyone. My name is Alyssa and welcome back to this glorious YouTube channel. So today we are going to be reviewing the Fit Nights 5 and 6 of the G1 Climax 30. I know, I'm finally recording them all. Yes, I just recorded the other one the other day. I'm finally going to record two more. I'm very proud of myself because I'm trying to be consistent with recording and things so that I have consistent content. And yeah, but... So, if you don't know what the G1 is, I'll try to link the first video I did where I kind of go over it in the somewhere, maybe in the down bar, maybe in like a little I would card up here or something. And I'll also link to the second G1 review video where I reviewed Nights 3 and 4 in case you missed that and want to watch that as well. Okay, so in each of these videos, I try to go over an A block and a B block. So nights 5 and 6 are an A block and a B block. Then it's going to be nights 7 and 8, which will be another A block and then another B block. So I go in that order. Yeah, so I guess, shall we just get on with it? So, the first match on our list today is Yujiro Takahashi versus Taichi. I can't really get behind Yujiro. I can't, I tr I've tried. I've just tried. It's not even because of his gimmick or anything. It's just he's not that good and he's, especially in this match, he was kind of slow, like in the ring and stuff. And I am typically not a fan of that at all. No, 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 that is a no from me. Um, tai Chi selling in this match, though, y'all. Tai Chi selling. I feel like he's gotten a lot better overall, but in this match, especially, I thought that he really tried to put Yujiro over in the best way that he could. Because the thing is, it's not like Tai Chi himself would be considered a top wrestler or a top heel or anything, you know, in the company. So I thought that he did what he could to try to put Yujiro over. And I appreciate that. Taichi, I, I say this quite a bit, but I actually noted it this time. Tai Chi has really improved, like over the past year. I remember when I started watching towards the end of 2017, like, I started watching in like 2017, pretty sure. So I remember even then, like, I wasn't really into the gimmick or anything. I didn't really get it. And then like in this past year i feel like he's really worked on his character worked on being consistent and really work tai chi's gotten in really good shape from over the past few years from what i can over the past year should i say from what i can tell and it's really shown an improvement in the ring and and stuff too. Promo wise, you don't really see a lot of him. So I can't say anything about that necessarily. But I can say that I think that he's improved quite a bit as a wrestler. Now, I gave this match a 2.5. And that was really because of Tai Chi. And I thought that he tried the best that he could. Yujiro kind of tried, I guess I would say. But I felt that Tai Chi really was trying to put in the work to put Yujiro over to the best of his ability. And I appreciated that. 
And actually, Taichi won the match. So, hats off to him. So the next match that we have to review is Jeff Cobb versus Minoru Suzuki. Um, This match was more of, I would say, a strong style match, which I don't typically mind. I enjoy it. I think it's fine. Nothing wrong with it. This is a type of match that I don't mind being a bit of a slower pace. Because typically they are anyway because they're more hard hitting. Um, and but Jeff Cobb is so versatile. Like, y'all, he can literally go from doing freaking flips, tricks, all of it. To, hot, to strong style with someone like Suzuki. And I think that that is really good. And I've, especially since Jeff Cobb officially fully signed with New Japan, something about him has changed since, like, he did that. I don't know what it is. But I've really started to enjoy him. I think he's gotten a lot better. And he looks like he's gotten in a major shape. Like, he seems to be taking care of himself pretty well. Jeff Cobb's suplexes are A+. Plus. I do think he does a good suplex. He's gotten so good, like, at anything. Like, his tour of the islands, I really like it. And I really think that overall he's gotten a lot better. And stayed a lot more consistent with what he's doing. Um, I gave this match a 3.5 because... Overall, I would say that it was more so just kind of there for me. I didn't think it was bad, but I also didn't think it was the best match we're ever going to see or something. So I just kind of put it in the middle. And Suzuki won! Good for Suzuki. But yeah, I don't mind that though. Because, I mean, really, I think even... Suzuki needs a win at some point in the G1, like, even though he's definitely not gonna win, like, I, he, everyone's gonna get some points on the board, right? So, the next match we're gonna be going over is Tomohiro Ishii versus Koda Ibushi. Okay. So, again, another sort of more strong style match. She has become so versatile. Yeah. No, he really has. Like, because I feel like before he was more of the high flying kicks, tricks, you know, the whole shebang. But I would say over the past year or so, again, that he's someone else that's learned a different style, such a strong style, and really just kind of ran with it. And, you know, he's good at it. I really enjoyed seeing him do it, especially with someone like Ishii, who's another good wrestler, even though clearly he's not going to win the G1 either. It's gl I'm, good. I'm glad that he's able to go in and put on good, consistent matches with someone else that is able to do it as well as he can such as ibushi and shingo ishii is such a good strong style guy no he is though like anytime i see ishii i he's such a good strong style guy he, from the chops to the suplexes to even just grapple wrestling and I think that he's a really good strong style guy. And if you need that for any reason, I think Ishii is someone to go to. If, like, you're trying to get someone else into that style or this or that. I definitely think Ishii is someone that can help train. And I really enjoy seeing Ishii when he's doing this and he's been very consistent with it too and i appreciate it because he is a bit up there in age and you know he's still consistent and i think that good on him you know 
Like, honestly, good on him. I gave this match a four because I thought it was really good. I would say that it was definitely one of the better matches of that night. But I wouldn't say it was the best that I had seen that night. Or that maybe I was going to see that night. Because there was still like another two matches after this. I mean, I guess I wasn't that surprised by this. But Ibushi won. Not that surprising, but kind of surprising. Considering the fact that Ibushi isn't really one of the go-to strong style guys. It was, I would, I guess, maybe a bit surprising. But... I mean, why not, I guess. Um, so, the next match we have on our list is Shingo Takagi versus Will Ospreay. Oh, there was this sequence in the beginning of the match that was crazy i don't even remember entirely what it was but i just remember it being like one of the craziest sequences i've ever seen like shingo do or osprey like i thought it was a really good sequence it was like that it was like the first or second major sequence that they did in the match i'm pretty sure and it was very high pain very high energy very high very good pain very well paced um consistent energy i really liked it i the crowd was into it too if i remember right yeah and then shingo did like that really nice suplex outside the ring that i thought was really good and but shingo is so good like honestly Shingo is definitely one of the better wrestlers in NJPW, and <sighs> Shingo is just so good. We love that for him. Osprey in this match, I would say, wasn't actually that extra, and he just kind of went with it. I was very surprised. Um, and he, he definitely did more of a strong style thing this time and I thought it was even though he did still do a little bit of his fly flying you know it wasn't as much but I thought that based off of the two different styles that it was very well paced very well done and I definitely would want to see it again um I gave it out of my five out of my one out of five ranking I gave it a five because I thought that it was a really good match and I appreciated the amount of energy and the amount of time that you can tell that they put into it. And I mean, even though I don't typically like Osprey, I gotta give credit where credit is due. And obviously I think Shingo is a great wrestler. So of course there's gonna be a great match coming out of you, when you have two good wrestlers, even though, like I said, I don't typically like Osprey, more so because I don't really like him as a person. Um, I thought this was a really good match, and I really appreciated the effort that was put in. And Shingo won! And even though I know Shingo isn't going to win the G1, part of me wants him to. <laughs> Just to see, like, a Shingo major title run because it's what he deserves you know like that man deserves it um okay but next match on our list is actually the main event of the evening kazuchika okada versus jay white <sighs> these two troll each other to the max Anytime they're in the ring together, like, Jay does his normal thing, gets out of the ring first, but it was so funny watching them. It's so, it's always so funny watching them together because they really have good chemistry in the ring together. I swear, like, it's so good. And I just, 
Okada is so good. Jay is so good that it's like you are always, regardless, even if you're tired of the match, I can be tired of seeing Jay versus Okada, yet still love the match because they're just two good wrestlers. Don't matter. Okada was actually working in this match too. So um, I've been kind of complaining up until about this point that Okada hadn't really seemed to be working as much. Like, he seemed to just kind of be lackadaisy. I don't know. Like, I wasn't sure what it was, what was, what was going on, you know, but he seemed kind of lackadaisy in what he was doing and his maneuvers and everything. And he just hadn't been as good. Like, if I had seen the Okada from the start of the G1 or Summer Struggle, you know, I definitely would not have liked him, or I would have been more so like, the fuck is this? What are y'all talking about? Like, if I had started watching at that point, but because I started watching before then, and I would seen what Okada could do, it was more so disappointed me that he wasn't doing that. Um, more so hard hitting, I would say, even though obviously, you have Okada, you're going to get a little bit of the high-flying thing. But Jay maneuvers around that so well. Like, Jay can do pretty much anything. If you, I mean, you know, I feel like if they wanted Jay to be a face, he could be a face. But here's the thing. I don't know if he'd actually be that good at it. Because I just see Jay as a natural heel. I don't know why. And I don't, I don't mean it in a bad way, either. Like, I just see him, it, it just fits his style more. It just fits his personality more, I would say. Than, like, being a face or something. But, okay, so, back on Okada. Okada's drop kicks are always so good, I swear. Like, he drop kicks like a god. I don't know how he does it, but please teach me your ways. Because holy shit, he has some of the best drop kicks I see to date. So, of course, I gave this match a five um, out of my one out of five ranking because I thought, again, that it was really good. They paced it very well. They definitely have great chemistry in the ring. I always love seeing these two together because they definitely put on a show. And Jay won, but no, that is not why. Even though Jay won, that wasn't the only reason I liked the match. Y'all can think I'm biased, but no. Even though I can be a little bit biased, it's not that biased. So now, it's time to move into B Block. So, the first match on B Block that we have is Sonata versus Yoshihashi. Yoshihashi is just so bad. Like, I can't. I can't. I don't understand the character. I can't get behind him. He's so slow. He barely even does anything. And I just, I can't. I just can't do it. He's boring. I, I just don't get it. Sonata was straight up stiffing him for a little bit there, too. It was crazy. Sonata was pissed when he came out. And then he started stiffing freaking Yoshihashi. And I was like, whoa. Like, that's never happened before. Um, everything good? Like, it was pretty crazy to see Sonata straight up stiffing someone like that. Made me wonder if maybe Sonata didn't really want to do the match. Because that typically happens when, you know, even though you have to do a match with someone, you typically don't really want to do it. Like Naito and Moxley last year, Naito kind of did the same exact thing. So it made me wonder if it was something like that. Like maybe something happened backstage and they were arguing or something about a certain part of the match or 
something and you know um just, oh and just poor Sonata like even for having to do this match I just felt so bad for him like he deserves better I that is someone else that I want to see in the main title picture Sonata is just so good he can do literally anything and he has that crown in the palm of his hand like no joke it is insanity i gave this match a two on my one out of five rating scale because i thought sonata did fairly well even though he was stiffing yoshihashi and kind of didn't really want to do the match which you could kind of tell um I thought he did fine. There was nothing wrong with him. Yoshihashi, on the other hand, didn't really seem to put in as much work or as much effort. And so, of course, when you only have a one-sided match, you know there's only going to be one-sided outcome. So it's just kind of hard to deal with that. And Yoshihashi won. Like, I just can't even... The fact that Yoshihashi won after literally doing pretty much nothing in the match, like, I, I, I can't. I don't even have any words for that. Just, I, I can't. So, the next match on our list is Zack Sabre Jr. versus Kenta. This is someone else that didn't that came out fairly pissed off did not really seem to want to do and he didn't really want to seem to do this match either it was very interesting seeing the first two matches of this night because they were both not happy and you could tell Kenta is just not good though like I was okay with him at first like but I don't think that he's good anymore, even if he was. Kenta's not Kenta anymore. Fortunately, he's had too many injuries and things like that to be the Kenta that maybe everyone knew and loved. You know, when he was in his other company before he went to NXT, but he had his shoulder injury. I think he may have had two shoulder injuries in NXT, and then I think he may have even had a concussion at one point while he was there. I don't really remember all the injuries, but I do vaguely remember that he had a fair amount of injuries while he was in NXT. And that could play a part in his new slower style that he's doing that I'm not really into. Like, he was still fine when he was in NXT. Like, I didn't hate him as a new day with Tommy at all. There was nothing wrong with him, but he came to... NJPW and he is working a very weird, very slow style that I don't know if it's maybe just because he's a heel or what it is, but it's very weird and I'm not with whatever they, he's doing or whatever they're having him do. Zach, I'm just so sorry. I'm so sorry that you even had to do this match because this, Kenta is someone else that cannot really keep up with the submissions and things like that. And he kind of tried to, I would say, but I wouldn't, he just can't do it. And so Zach couldn't really do any of his typical shtick, you know, and it just left Zach kind of in the dust. I just, I, I, I'm so sorry, Zach. Um, like I was saying, slow pace, very slow pace. Kind of boring, I would say. Even though Zach's typically a fun wrestler to watch, I typically very much so enjoy Zach. But yeah, this match was a super slow pace. Was not really with it. Couldn't really be because Zach, t like, like, I get Kenta. It seems to be a slower wrestler now. I don't know. Like I said, I don't even know why. It doesn't even really make that much sense to me because that wasn't his style before. I don't know if it's maybe just something NJPW is having him do or he decided to do for injury purposes. You know? It could really be either or. 
To be honest, I just don't know which it is. Um, I gave this match a 1.5 because Zach tried to do something. And, I mean, I guess I could say Kenta did kind of too, which is why I gave it. I could give it a 2, but I just didn't think the match was good enough to be a 2. I was not that into it at all. As much as I love Zack and I liked Kenta, I just couldn't really get into it. And Kenta won. Good for him, I guess. But I wasn't really that. So next match on the list is Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Juice Robinson. So, Juice has gotten so good. Like, Juice is so solid now and, like, consistent as a wrestler that it, I've really been enjoying his newer stuff. Like, it, yes. I'm, I could say that I'm kind of a fan of Juice now. But I don't know how long that's going to stick. Because <laughs> you never know. He could go back to being Juice. It's just right now... It could just be right now he's so excited to be back that he's trying something new. And, you know, Tanahashi is a literal legend. Like, he's so good regardless. Like, I'm so... Just Tanahashi is so good. And I really enjoy watching Tanahashi whenever I get to. Because he's always so consistent. Even if he's hurt or even if... He's tired, and you can tell that the man's tired and just needs a nap. Like, he always stays fairly consistent in what he's doing. Um, slow yet solid pacing. I would say that it was a bit of a slower match. Obviously, you have Tanahashi who's a bit up there. And Juice, I would say, kind of wrestles a bit more of a slower style, too. Like Kenta, but Juice has kind of been upping the pace of his stuff of his work which i appreciate he's trying <laughs> unlike kenta so you know there's that too i gave this match a 3.5 out of my one out of five ranking because i thought it was solid i thought it was pretty good but i didn't think it was going to be the best or the worst i was going to see that night because you never know which it can be um so, I put it in the middle, because I didn't think it was bad, but I also didn't think it was spectacular. It was just kind of there. And, Tanahashi won! I, I, I think he, I mean, I don't know, I don't think he's going to win the G1. But, it's a, you never know. You know, like, Tanahashi is someone, though, that can literally just get a win over anyone, and you don't mind doesn't matter who it is because it, that's just it's Tanahashi you know like he's so good so the next match on our list is Toriano versus evil how many times do I gotta say that I hate evil for y'all to understand and change his gimmick or something make him work like how many times do i gotta say this for y'all to fix it <laughs> i i can't evil is so bad and so slow and i, I just i can't i'm not with it i'm not with <sighs> most of the bullet club guys I was fine with before, but just recently, I can't do it. I can't. Like, they've all just gotten on my nerves. I don't know why, but they have, and I can't. Um, bringing a post, a ring pad galore. Yes! They were taking off ring pads the whole time and just hitting each other with them. That was kind of funny. Um, I thought that that was really funny. And obviously, Yano's comedy. So, of course, you're going to get a little bit of that. And I don't 
I always love Yano. Yano's so good. Like, he can literally make anything good. But the thing is, is... It just... You can't make evil look good. You can't. Evil has to make himself look good. Evil has to be good. Or be at least somewhat decent. And he's not. And you can't, unfortunately, do anything with that. And I'm sorry, Yano, that, you know, you even had to do this match. Um, like I said, it was a slower, yet, it was a slower pace, yet it still had major comedy. So, fine, I guess, for people that like that. I'm not that into it. I can be okay with comedy, but not slow. Um, I gave this match a 2.5 because, I mean, it was, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. I wasn't into it, really. Yano was really the only good thing about the match to me. So, you know, how that goes. And Yano won, which I'm pretty sure, again... It's so funny that they, I don't know why they keep having him do this. Because I guess we like it so much. But he taped Evil's legs together. Like he's been doing so much recently. And I love it. I don't know why. It's never going to get old. Like honestly. The main event was Naito, or Hiroki Goto versus Tetsuya Naito. Godo was so slow. Like, I, I, I can't. I, uh, uh, Godo was just so slow in this match. I don't really understand the whole thing behind Godo. Maybe if someone can explain it to me, I can be more behind it. I'm not really with it, though. I can't. He's not good to me. I don't think he's the best. Or I don't think he's the worst, but I also don't think he's the best. I would say he's more mediocre slash low to me. Naito was so good, though. He can literally make anything work. Like, hands down, he sold so well for Goto. And just... <laughs> Naito, when he wants to work with someone, he will put in the work. And that's another thing. And that's something, though, that it shows about Goto is that... He might actually kind of like Goto for some reason. Even if me or other people don't. He seems to. Or even if I don't or other people don't. He seems to. So, you know. Good on him. Um, I gave this match 3.5. I know, surprising, because it's Goto. But it was okay. Kind of middle. Not that good, not that bad. Wasn't really, you know, it was there. It was fine. Nothing terrible about it. Naito won. Go Naito. We love that for him. I'm so glad that they're giving Naito the chance to do what he, the show went off. What he can do finally after so long. Because he genuinely deserves that. And we love that for him. But... Okay, so that brings me to the end of this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And comment your favorite matches from the, these two nights down below. Tell me your favorite NJBW wrestlers as well. And um, if you like my face, be sure to subscribe. And when I upload, is that important? Be sure to hit the notification bell, which should be somewhere maybe by the BTS poster now. Since I changed my setting, um, might be a, might be a towards my Funko Pop or my BTS poster or my TV. I don't know. I still don't know where it is. Someone tell me. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's it for today. Um, bye bye.